Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers, and welcome to this morning's Daily Devotional Guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. For today being Tuesday, the 17th of September, 2024. Our topic for consideration today is a vow fulfilled. A vow fulfilled. And our Bible text is taken from first book of Samuel, chapter 1, beginning to read from verse 19. First Samuel, chapter 1, reading from verse 19. 1 Samuel 1, 19 says, Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son, and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. Now the man Achena and all his house went up to offer to the Lord the yearly sacrifice and his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, not until the child is wind. Then I will take him, that he may appear before the Lord and remain there forever. So Ekena, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have wind him. Only let the Lord establish his word. Then the woman stayed and nursed her son until she had weaned him. Now when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bulls, one ephah of flour and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh, my Lord, as your soul lives, my Lord, I am the woman who stood by you here, praying to the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord has granted me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore, I also have lent him to the Lord, as long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. So they worshipped the Lord there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God our Father, we thank you for today, and thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking up. Thank you, Father, for the privilege to meditate before your holy presence. Thank you, God, because you meet us at, our, at the point of our needs, even as you met your maid servant, Hannah. We pray, Lord, that as we make our vows, that you help us to redeem them, even as Hannah redeemed hers. We pray, mighty God, that this study and this fellowship, this devotion, will be filled with the power of your Holy Spirit to minister unto us and to equip us for the day. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. For in the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. After the trip to the temple in Shiloh, 
Hannah was looking for the fruit of the womb and she went and um, cried her heart out to God. God answered Hannah's prayer. She became pregnant and later was delivered of a baby boy whom she named Samuel. That year, Kenna and his family went to Shiloh without Hannah, who was nursing the child. After the child was weaned, Hannah and Samuel accompanied the family to worship and sacrifice at Shiloh, where she handed over Samuel to Eli in fulfillment of her vow. Now, a vow is a promise. A vow is an oath, a sort of bond, commitment. Hannah made this commitment, made this promise, like took a note while she was asking Samuel of the Lord. It was a pledge. And so a vow, being a promise, Hannah brought Samuel to the temple so that he can fulfill her vow that she made to the Lord who blessed her with a baby boy. Apart from this kind of vow that um, Hannah made, there are other forms of vow. We have, for example, uh, what can be called state vows or national vows like the president when a new government is about to be inaugurated the president is expected to take an oath of office that oath of office is like a vow a promise to the people a promise before god a promise before the people that he is going to uphold the constitution of the land that he will be fair, he will be just in the way he governs the people. It is like a vow. So that could be a state vow. It's not only the president, sometimes um, the vice also, the vice president, and not just the president, sometimes the governors also make this vow, take this oath of office. Their deputies do so also. Um, certain appointments demand that the person makes a vow. They take a note before they take that office, like some of our judges, even our legislators, some of our senators, they are sworn in. And so they take a vow and they make a pledge to be loyal to the constitution of the land. Apart from that, which I have explained as state or uh, national vows, there is also professional vows. People in various disciplines of study, they make vows, they take vows, like engineers, like accountants, um, call to bear, and the rest of them. There are also religious vows, sort of oaths. This happens um, during our ordination of priests or during the consecration of bishops. And such vows relate to promising to be holy, vows of integrity, vows of commitment, vows um, to be just and fair in our pastoral functions and duties. And so those could be termed as religious vows. There are other, other forms of vows like marital vows. Um, during marriage, uh, solemnization of um, holy matrimony, um, the man could say, I, Kennedy, take the Oluremi, or I, Caroline, take the Ibrahim to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until we are parted by death. And then after making these vows um, to each other, the man to the wife, the wife to the man, 
Then the both of them, the two of them, are expected to go on and live together in the commitment of the vow that they have taken. And so I've mentioned state vow, national vow, professional vows, religious vows, which people take during consecration, um, during ordination, or other functions of um, faith and religion. And uh, I just mentioned marital vows, which is exchange between the man and the woman. Now in the Old Testament, vows are viewed as sacred, sacred commitments made voluntarily to God. This is the view and perception in Old Testament. Though a couple of instances, it has been made to a person. And of course, uh, we can vividly remember when Herod um, threw a party and um, Salome, the daughter of the wife, came and danced. Danced in the party so much that um, the king, Herod, was enthused. And he called the young girl and um, said to her, ask me of anything you want me to do, up to giving you half of my kingdom and I will give it to you. The young girl, and, and, and he made a vow that whatever you ask of me, I am going to give it to you. The young woman didn't know what to ask of and she ran to her mother and what her mother did was to ask for the head of um, John the Baptist in a platter. So, um, though the king was grieved when this request came from the, the girl, but because it was a vow that he made, he didn't have a choice. Um, even though he didn't want to do that and uh, he was sorry about that, but because it was a vow, it had to be done. And so they went and beheaded the prophet of God, John. And that was how John lost his life. And so vows are often acts of devotion or gratitude and are seen as binding once it is spoken. That is why we need to be very, very careful before we make a vow. Because once we make it, we cannot take it back. It is important that we understand this. And of course, the scripture warns about um, making sure we show our integrity by uh, fulfilling our vows, just as Hannah did. Hannah promised that if God blessed her with the fruit of the womb and gave her a son, that she was going to return this son to serve God all his life. And of course, this was fulfilled in our text today. Um, this scripture, Numbers chapter 30, verse 2, says, If a man makes a vow to the Lord, or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall not break his words. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. And so this we must understand, that when we make a vow, we must stand by our vow, and we must bring them to fruition. We must make sure that we fulfill the vows that we make. That is the scripture there, Numbers 30, verse 2. If a man makes a vow to the Lord, or swears an oath to bind himself by some agreement, he shall not break his word, he shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Now, in the New Testament, vows must be followed with integrity. Um, I quickly refer us to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 37. Matthew chapter 5 verse 37. There, Jesus simply said, Let your yes be yes, and your no, no. For whatever is more than this is from the devil, from the evil one. I don't think Jesus um, actually subscribes to um, taking a note. But he said to us, we must stand by our words. And when we are saying yes, let it be yes. And when we are saying no, let it be no. There is no room for dancing from one end to the other. 
And so that is very, very important. So that when we make our vows, we must stand by it and we must make sure that we fulfill our vows. It is important for us to know and also understand that God is the ultimate keeper of vows. Several passages highlight God's unchanging nature and his fulfillment of his promises. Of course, God fulfills his promises to his children, his promises to the church, his promises to us and those who diligently seek him. God is the ultimate keeper of vows. I have one in Luke chapter 1, verses 72 to 73. Luke chapter 1, verse 72 to verse 73. And there he says, To perform the mercy promised to our fathers, and to remember his holy covenant, Verse 73, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham. There has never been an instant, an instance where God made a promise and he did not fulfill it. God will always fulfill his promise, even unto our salvation. He is faithful to his promises. Romans chapter 11 verse 27 says, For this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. For this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. Romans chapter 11 verse 27. And of course, this came to pass. How did it come to pass? God did not spare his only son, Jesus Christ. He gave him up so that he will die for our sins. And the scripture tells us that God's love for us was made manifest, that even when we were yet sinners, he gave Jesus to die for our sins. And so it is in consonance with this text, Romans 11, verse 27, for this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. God in Christ has taken away our sins. God in Christ takes away our sins. And that's why Jesus was seen as the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so such assurances underscore how God's unbreakable promises serve as the foundation of our faith. The foundation of our faith is that God's promises come to pass. If you like, use the word vow. God does not speak in vain. Whatever he says comes to pass, and that is um, the foundation of our faith, so that we do not flag in vain. God's promises never fail. They never fail. There is um, a chorus that we used to sing that, um, my God is a miracle God. My God is a miracle God. Um, he has never failed, and he will never fail. He will do what he has promised to do. That shows God's faithfulness in every way. So Hannah was blessed by God and she returned that child, the male child and the person of Samuel. She brought her back to the temple to dedicate him for God's work just as she promised. I'd like to read out this scripture. It's very, very insightful and very, um, it supports our topic for today. And that is the book of Psalm, chapter 116 and verse 12. Psalm 116, verse 12. Psalm 116, verse 12 says, What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? And then verse 13, Psalm 116, he says, I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. And then verse 14 says, Psalm 116, verse 14, he says, I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. You can see that. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. In fact, the same Psalm 116 Again, in verse 18, it says, I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people. This is very, very important that when we make vows, we redeem our vows. Hannah asked for Samuel 
God honored her prayers, and she was here in the temple to give Samuel back to God. There are some people who make vows to God, and they do not fulfill them. Such behavior is not good, and it is very, very ungodly. It is not good. When we make vows, let us endeavor to redeem them. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verses 4 and 5 says, When you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you have vowed. Verse 5 says, Better not to vow than to vow and not pay. It is better you do not make any comment, you do not make any vow, than you make a vow, you make a promise, and you do not bring it to fulfillment. That is not the nature of God, that is not the character of God, and that is not good of a child of God, and it's not good for Christians. I want to ask this question, what did you vow to God that you have not paid? This is a self-reflective question. We search through our memory, our inner man and woman. Can you think of or remember anything that you promised to God that you did not redeem? A vow that you made that you did not redeem. Hannah was distrust. Hannah was sad because she didn't have a child. And she prayed God to give her a child. And particularly a male child. And that if God did so, she was going to return that child to him, to serve him all the day of the child's life. And she made that come to pass. These days, we might see people who say, oh, I have him now. Um, God, I'm sorry, I didn't mean, um, please, um, let me keep him. No, Hannah didn't do that. When we make vows, we redeem our vows. And the book of Ecclesiastes says that if we know that we wouldn't redeem our vows, there is no point making it. It is better that we keep quiet. What did you vow to God that you have not paid? Some church members make pledges in the church which they never pay. This is not good. This is sin. And people should repent. Sometimes we borrow money from people promising them that we will pay back and we never pay that money back. It might not be money. It might be something like book or anything. We go to borrow and we keep it for ourselves. That is not right. Let us repent and do what is right. Is there a promise you made unfulfilled yet? Could be to your husband, to your wife, to a customer in business, to a partner. Endeavor to fulfill that because that is where the blessing of God lies. We should be faithful and trustworthy Christians and fulfill our vows to God and our neighbors. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word that we heard today. Help us, O God, to be reasonable with our vows. And when we make our vows, O God, help us to fulfill them. Give us what we need to fulfill all the promises and vows we have made at any time. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.